This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. The law of unintended consequences may have set in here. Uh, modern medicine has been progressing at uh, Olympian uh, paces. And we would think that would be a good thing in Western democratic countries. Uh, just about every decade, we're adding another two years to people's lifespan. And you'd think that would be a good thing in most ways, but it presents some real challenges. For example, who's going to be able to retire? How can you, re can you make enough money to retire at 55, 65, 75? And where is all the money going to come from? Uh, no less august a group than the Ontario Teachers Fund, which apparently owns billions in assets and has for a long time. Even they are struggling with their basic asset uh, 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 capital bank. So it's a challenge for everybody. Meanwhile, the good folks at CARP, the Canadian Association of Retired Persons, is that right? Retired Persons, uh, are wondering what's going to happen to uh, Canadian pensions, both private and public. And to discuss that very issue is Bruce Bird, who is the chair of CARP North Fraser Chapter. Bruce, thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. So, so it, it is a massive challenge. Where, where is the, I, I know that CARP wants a pension upgrade, but where's the money going to come from? From the people who should contribute to it. It's not, a, it's not a handout from government. It's simply a case of, of expanding the CPP. Yes. Because it's a very sound program. It's, it's, yes. It's, uh, it's good for the next 75 years at least. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Very, very well. We, do we know this? Actuaries or whomever have said it's, it's, what they've it's said. there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay. And when you say expand, what do you mean? In what way expand it? Make, qualify more people? Not qualify more people, but let them contribute more to it. So, for example? Well, the, the, the goal is, first of all, to leave it the way it is for those earning $25,000 or less. Yes. For those earning more, they will have a chance to contribute more. Right now, the maximum is payout is $12,000 a year. Yes. What we're proposing is that it be phased in to a, so it can reach a high of $40,000 a year. Okay. So a person is working for whomever, for this, okay? I thought of the first ubiquitous company I could think of. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 a person is working for and making, let's say, 56000 a year doing something mm -hmm. or other. Uh, not the worst wage in the world, and not the best, but there it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's probably, I'm guessing, sort of an average Canadian wage. Uh, so at the moment, they can only contribute so much. That's right. Uh, that person can only contribute so much. How does that uh, work? If that person contributes, I make up a number, 1,200 a year, what does the contribute? The same? The same. Mm -hmm. They must match. That's, that's right, yes. Uh, okay. So what effect would that have? Why would somebody say no to, to your proposal? It seems like a reasonable proposal to say, well, that person could, should be allowed to contribute 2000 Who would say no? Well, pro probably some employers would. Yes. The, the argument from the federal government and some of the other provinces is that the, the economy is too weak for it. Yes. Even though when the... CPP was increased gradually from 1997 to 2003, from 5.8% yes. to 9.9%. .9%. The uh, employment rate actually went up, with one exception, just the 2001 where there was a recession. But other than that, the employment 
rate improved every year. Are you saying that in general big business uh, capitalists will argue that if we have to shell out that amount of money, we're going to have to fire people, we just don't have the resources? Is that <laughs> the argument? That, that, that's the argument they're using, yes. And, you're, and you have said publicly that you believe that there's some sort of an unspoken agenda or a bias built into the federal government. Well, in uh, November of 2013, CARP did a a survey, we do surveys all the time with our members, but this particular survey asked them what they thought the reason was. And they were, the overwhelming majority of them said that it was ideological. The reason what was? The reason that the federal government was opposing it. Aha. Uh -huh. And what is the ideology? That's, what is this ideology that is unstated, but apparent to CARP members? Because it's a, it's a public program. It's a public program. And what? And where they're going to be accused of being communists or what? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're going to be, they're going to have Joe McCarthy breathing down their neck or, 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 or Boehner or whatever his name is, the Republican <laughs> House. <laughs> Why? What, what's the ideology? That governments should only interfere in our lives so much. That's right, exactly. Well, I think probably, you know, a, a lot of Canadians might side with, with that, that government has a place, but we don't want government running our lives. Uh, you know, we try to keep government out of business. They always do mm -hmm. a bad job in business, you know, as <laughs> witness to BC ferries and other fiascos. <laughs> so if you were the government, if you were mm -hmm. Mr. Harper or Flaherty or whomever, what would you do? What would you do to, 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 to change this in a way that you think would be acceptable to your neighbors? Well, the um, Prince Edward Island and Ontario yes. proposed a plan, as I said, to increase the, the contributions over time for those earning more than $25,000 a year Okay. so that they would have an adequate pension. Because not only is the limit 12000 the average payout is only seven thousand a year. Yeah, I'm just I'm sitting here trying to calculate. I, I have two pensions from the federal government, and they both come in at roughly five hundred bucks, mm -hmm. sort of. Okay, so what does that come to? Uh, so I get, I guess, between the two of them, a grand a month. So there's your twelve thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that's right. A and and you would be. What would you do for someone like me, or to someone like me who's in his seventies? and uh, maybe has contributed over the years, but is now uh, drawing down. It, it's, it's too late for you. <laughs> that, that's the whole I've thing. I've heard this I mean, so many times, but here's, usually it's but, about my love life. Yeah. But here's a group of seniors. Yes. They're advocating for something they will not benefit from. Aha. Uh -huh. The younger people will be the ones to benefit. That's interesting because younger people are always complaining about guys like you and me exactly. that, that we don't care about them. Yeah, we're right. taking up too much room. Sure. Have you noticed people trying to push you on a, onto an ice flow lately? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, these changes would affect people who are still in the labor force. Exactly. But they couldn't be grandfathered for you and me. No, no, they would not be. No. So, Bruce, uh, just let's just pick this up. I'm not sure what you meant. I, I'm rather stupid about financial matters, or else I'd be rich. This doesn't cost the government anything, you the said. The contribution comes strictly from the individuals and their employers. And the employers. Nothing from government. Okay, so, so whatever uh, uh, you or the government actually did wouldn't cost the government, but it might cost the employers. That's right. Okay, so you've also said... You're talking about Andrew Coyne's uh, comments. You said that his emphasis on voluntary and private sector solutions to all problems suggests a similar ideological basis. You're talking about the, the columnist, Mr. Coyne. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what what bias? I mean, what is that bias again? You're saying that again, the, the, the bias is against public programs and against arbitrary programs because. The, there's no way that people can be relied on to voluntarily contribute to it a sufficient amount to, to really make a difference. In 2011, yes. Statistics Canada said that Canadians contributed a total of 4.5% of their eligible contributions to RRSPs. Really? So, so as telling people you can contribute doesn't help. 
Now, what you really have to do if you want them to contribute is saying, you're contributing. That's, that's the law. That's right, exactly. Do you think we'll get to that? Do you think we would do that? I think we will. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a, a number of provinces are on, on, are on side with it now. In fact, Ontario is going it alone. They're going to do, develop their own program. Okay, now look, we, 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 you're talking largely about public pension plans. Yes? That's right. Or entirely about public pension plans. Well, uh, yes. Well, yes, in, in this case. But the other side of it is that the, the private pension plans are doing less and less of a job in helping, to, helping people to retire. Yeah, you've said in your, in your letter to the editor, which came out about a month and a half ago, you said the private sector, with its shift to defined contribution pension plans and excessive investment fees, have proven not to be the answer. That's right. Well, let's just explain to people what you mean by defined uh, uh, pension plan, defined contributions, because uh, uh, that shows up in a lot of commentary, that phrase. A lot of the people retiring now or about to retire yes. had defined benefit programs. So they made contributions, their employers made contributions, and out of that they receive a fixed amount, well, probably adjusted for inflation. Okay. But it's a guaranteed amount. Yes. With a defined contribution plan, they contribute. They don't know how much they're going to get. It depends on the markets. What, if anything, we're, we've got a minute to our break. What, this mm -hmm. is a little out of your uh, venue here, but what, if anything, can you do about all the companies who are increasingly hiring part-time workers or contracted workers so that pension plans don't even show up? Well, that's, that, that's the other part of it. That, that yes. Two-thirds of the working workforce now do not have any pension plan at all. Tough story. Okay, we're going to take a little break, and when we come back, I want to pick up a bit more about what the private world is or isn't doing or could be mm -hmm. doing. All right, our guest is Bruce Baird from uh, the uh, North Fraser chapter of Canadian Association of Retired Persons. We're talking about can we boost up uh, pension, uh, federal pension plans, and can we afford not to? Can we afford to or not to? Your opportunity to take a moment and uh, send us a note to davidburner.com. Always happy to hear from you. And a chance for those lovely folks who support us here uh, to say hello uh, here on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Back in just a moment. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. Here's Gwyn Morgan writing in the province just the other day, uh, just yesterday, in fact, uh, under the headline, How Solid Are Private Sector Pension Plans? And he says, look, pension plans across the globe are facing similar challenges, changing demos, low interest rates, slow growth economies, all serve to complicate the already ponderous issues of pension fund financial sustainability and intergenerational e equity. Those are big words. Mm -hmm. but, but, but he has he has pinpointed some real issues. World economies are not great. This isn't the best mm -hmm. economic uh, period to be in at the moment. Uh, low interest rates. Uh, and yet you're feeling, from your position, Bruce Byrd, with, with CARP, that Canada Pension Plan is well-funded and, and is good for at least another 40 years. No, 75, yeah. they listen to the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. Yes. But the, the point is that they are, they are doing a good job. Even in bad times, they are, they're continuing to grow the fund. Yes. Now, so what, is, what about Mr. Morgan's comments about 
about uh, private pension uh, plans? Well, it, it's, it's getting more acute all the time because a lot of the people retiring now had good pensions. Many of them had defined benefit pensions. Yes. The people coming up don't have that. They, um, less and less they have any pension plan at all, but if they do, then it's likely to be a defined contribution plan rather than a defined benefit plan. What are you seeing anecdotally uh, simply amongst the, the folks you hang out with, the people you know in CARP, in people, you know, a few years, uh, 10 years either side of you? What are you seeing? Are people struggling? Are more people struggling to pay the bills? More people are. Yes. More people are. Just, just as an example, the, um, the number of people over 55 working. Yes has increased from 22% to 35%. Yeah, I, I know lots of people who have been very bright and very fortunate in salting away some bucks, and they've done well, and, and they have been able to retire reasonably comfortably. Mm -hmm. And I know a few very rich people, of course. But most of the people that I know, honestly, uh, Bruce, are still working or still working part-time, and I know very few people who are expecting mm -hmm. that they're going to be able to utterly retire at some magical young age. People uh, 25 to 30. Yes. Because of the, um, the, the economy the last few years, the, uh, the lower wage levels, the lack of private pensions, that 44% of them will not have a comfortable retirement if conditions can continue the way they are. Well, lucky we have such a good health care system. A health care system that still has problems, but is still amazingly good compared to anywhere else in the That's world. That's right. Compared That's to right. most places. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have conflicting anecdotal evidence, though. For example, the issue of snowbirds. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if I say, well, people are struggling in old age financially, Someone younger might say, oh, all you old coots, you go down to Phoenix and, and Palm Desert every year. What are you talking about? You that's know? right. So A, that's true. But B, Palm Desert and Phoenix are experiencing a new phenomenon. They're getting more people who are young coming down mm -hmm. instead of folks our age. So, so what do you make of all that? Well, th there's really, th sure, there are some seniors that are extremely well off and they're enjoying life and they've got lots of money yeah but there's the other side of it particularly single women uh -huh. particularly single women mainly many widowed or, yes. or divorced yeah there's a, a i think it's something like 35 percent of those are, are uh, living below the poverty line really and interestingly enough, I mean, the, 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 um, the, uh, one of the arguments against this is, is that, well, people are doing well and uh, the, the rate of poverty is declining. It's just started increasing again. Yeah, I, I don't see it uh, declining. How many people do you know uh, in your own circle who are house rich and cash poor? <laughs> Lots. Is that a standard Canadian situation for older people? It's fairly common, I would say. Yeah, lots of people, in yeah. other words, have a home that's probably worth a few bucks, mm -hmm. quite a few bucks if they're in a city, sure. right? Uh, but don't have a lot of cash on hand. That's right. And so downsizing isn't just about not wanting to clean eight ro or ten rooms. It's about getting the cash out of that house. Exactly, yes. And, and so lots and lots of us do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Yeah. Yeah, 20, so, uh, 20, uh, 32 percent expect to sell their home to be able to have a decent retirement. So, Bruce, what is CARP doing uh, uh, besides coming on programs like this? What is CARP doing uh, as a social activist group? What, what kinds of things are you doing to get the attention of uh, Harper and Flaherty and others? Well, it's it's a struggle, they, but we've been we've been arguing ageism. We've been arguing. The um, pension income splitting, that, that took four years to get changed. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Along with 25 other organizations that joined us. It was a, a massive campaign. 
we are the, the pension issue is a big one for us right now. And how do you how do you approach them? Do you, do you, do you swamp them with emails? Do you ask for meetings? I mean, what do you do? Well, our advocacy team in Toronto is very good at getting meetings with politicians. Are they? Be well, you see, yes. they they have clout. We have three hundred thousand members. Yes. And seventy percent of seniors vote. How about that? That's a big number That's for right. any category exactly. in Canada, mm -hmm. because we sure. have terrible voter turnout. That's right. We have we have citizen groups, and I'll I'll have guests in the next coming weeks on this very issue who are doing nothing but trying to get people to vote. Yeah. Yes. So, the seniors have some clout when it comes to to government. Yes. I ran a public event yesterday uh, on a, it was a completely separate issue at a community center, and I would say at least half the people there were seniors, mm -hmm. and they were very active, vocal, and engaged in the issues. Yes. Yes, they are. Yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. it's wonderful. So, so do you feel that you're getting any hearing? Do you feel that, that the, the, you know, the politicians are just humoring you or patting you on the shoulder and saying, well, thanks a lot for dropping by? Or? Well, I think our advocacy team is, uh, is fairly effective. It takes time. Yes. But I, I think they are, they, they are getting somewhere. I know at one time we only had one chapter, one car chapter in BC. Yes. And um, I was chair of that, and they met and met with government a number of times, and we did get the oh, oh yes, that's a great idea. Yes. We'll follow up on that. Yeah. And, uh, nothing hear, happened. And you never hear from them, of no. course. Uh, retiree benefits for Ontario civil servants were cut recently, and Alberta public uh, pension plans. Uh, in, in the Alberta papers just this week, showing a lack of leadership and oversight. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> What's all that about? I don't know. Uh, yeah, do, 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 you, do you feel that, you, would you point that same figure at the federal government? Would you accuse the federal government of showing lack of leadership and oversight? You're saying that you think that the pension funds are well managed. I'm saying the Canada pension plan is well managed. But? But what? That that has nothing to do with government. The Canada, Canada, Canada Pension Plan Investment Board is completely separate, separate from government. Yeah. yeah. And they're not, they're, their investments are not influenced by government. Otherwise, they wouldn't be making some of the investments they do. Yeah. So you're looking for the government uh, to change some of the rules mm -hmm. so that there's some more money. Right. So exactly. That, so that there's more money there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, Besides people in CARP, do you have any allies? Do you have uh, allies outside of CARP? Well, I mean, 300,000 is a pretty good constituency. Well, it is, although our goal is a march to a million. Yes. Because then we can really have some clout with government. You have a badge? I'm going to make one for you that says, I'm a senior and I vote. <laughs> <laughs> Because I made one for a different subject. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. we, we remind the governments all, all the time of that. It's in all, any time we submit a brief to government, we mention that seniors who uh, vote. What, what, do, you say, what do you say to people uh, who are considerably younger and say, oh, you folks feel you're entitled. You, you folks feel you just, you know, you, you ate your cereal long enough and you hung around long enough so you, you feel that you, you know, the world owes you something. What do you say to that? Well, Because some young people will say that. Well, for, yeah. first of all, we made our contributions all our lives. Yes. And we're entitled to some benefits from those con contributions. But the fact is that we continue to make contributions. Seniors are the biggest group of volunteers. They devote millions of hours. Yes. A significant number of them are caregivers yep. to their parents or to others. Yep. And to their spouses. Mm -hmm. Yes, in some cases, yeah, sure. To their partners. Yep. Yeah. And they, um, some of them are providing homes for their parents and their children. They're, instead of selling their homes, they're, they're expanding them. They're uh, but there's a, an intergenerational yeah, family. Yeah, and we just have a minute left, uh, uh, Bruce, but there's a fundamental question here about what kind of a society we think we are. Mm -hmm. Are we an inclusive society that cares in some form or other not for the young and for the aged? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is the vision of what kind of a, a social fabric we have? 
Well, I think it, it, the uh, age-friendly community is something that we're working towards. And an age-friendly community recognizes both groups. In fact, there's some outstanding examples where facilities have, have been built to accommodate the young yeah. and, and the old. And the old. Yeah, yeah. In the same facility. I went to a huge community center mm -hmm. last night for an event, and it was so wonderful to see children and grandparents. It was mm -hmm. great. Bruce, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Yeah, great, great to see you, and good luck on your volleyball team. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep up the good work. Uh, next week, folks, Dr. Carl M. Williams, forensic psychologist, risk assessment in the criminal justice system. You're always reading the paper and saying, why did that guy get released from prison? We'll find out, and we'll find out how the system is working, if at all. Thanks for being with us uh, today here on Shaw Community Television. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.